Hello, PF Warriors, and welcome to a video short featuring the very distinguished Dr. Susan Mathai, advanced lung disease transplant pulmonary medicine physician at Baylor Scott & White Dallas. She has a very prestigious background, Harvard undergrad, Yale Medical School, residency at Mass General, pulmonary critical care fellowship, University of Colorado, Dr. Mathai is here to discuss a very important opportunity for all of us through a clinical trial you need to know about. So Dr. Mathai, the program is now yours. Hi, everybody. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to let y'all know about a um, trial that uh, we're op at um, Baylor Dallas, we're uh, opening up as a site for. And so we wanted to get the word out to the PF community, to PF Warriors community, because um, there's such a huge North Texas presence for the group. Um, so let me know if you, would y'all like me to go ahead and share? Yes. All right. So I will, I just have a couple brief slides about the, um, um, about the study um, so that uh, we can, just share kind of what y'all need to know and give you information such that if you're interested or want to participate, um, you can reach out to us. So the study that we're talking about, Stop IPF, Sercatinib in the Treatment of Patients with Idiopathic Pulmonary Fibrosis. And so to give you a little bit of background, um, this is a national study um, funded by the NIH. It's headed by Dr. Greg Downey, who is um, based at National Jewish. Um, and is one of the people that taught me during fellowship. Um, they had sites at National Jewish, Yale, and Mount Sinai in New York, and were recruiting at those sites and uh, have asked Dallas to be another site. And so that's kind of what we're getting the word um, out about. It's looking at evaluating safety and efficacy of sericatinib in, in treating IPF. And we're looking for eligible participants who are IPF patients who are not currently taking or already on um, nintetinib or profenadone, the two FDA approved medications for IPF. So to give you a little bit of a study overview Sarah of sericatinib in the treatment of patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, this is the clinicaltrials.gov link that I have up so that you can kind of read about it yourself. Um, it's a randomized placebo controlled trial. It's studying sericatinib and oral once a day medication. Uh, as I mentioned, funded by the NIH and at, at four sites right uh, right now or across the country. And it's a about a six week, or sorry, six month trial. So the duration of the trial is only about six months, which is different than some of the other clinical trials that are much longer. And so kind of a bigger commitment. Um, the typical visit frequency, if you average out the number of times you end up having to come in, it's about once a month for that six months. So to give you a sense, um, we um, visit with patients at baseline and then um, get a bunch of testing at four weeks um, that are looking at safety and efficacy, then at 12 weeks and 24 weeks. And they will be intermittent check-ins with the study staff in between to make sure things are going okay. The key inclusion criteria are IPF based on your um, physician's clinical diagnosis. Um, and that will, and the principal investigator at the site that you're enrolling at age greater than 40 years, your force vital capacity, which is one of the measurements that your pulmonologist is likely measuring every time they visit with you, um, should be over 45%. And your diffusing capacity, which is another one of the measurements we do in pulmonary function testing, needs to be between 30 and 79% predicted. Your FEV1 to FVC ratio, which again, um, your lung doctor or um, the investigator at the site uh, that you're um, talking to can can kind of confirm for you, but that ratio has to be greater than 70. The exclusion criteria. So what makes somebody not eligible to be in this trial? So if you need more than four liters of minute of oxygen at rest, if you're active, if you have an active infection um, that's, that requires treatment, that's also um, gonna be an exclusion criteria. If you have active or latent hepatitis B or C, if for some reason, either IPF or for a disease other than your IPF, you might, you are thought to have a life expectancy less than two and a half years, um, that would make you excluded from this trial. If you're actively listed for lung transplant, like with most other clinical trials, you're, you, you wouldn't be a candidate for this one. And as I mentioned before, you can't be on OFEV or Espriate or have taken them in the last four weeks. You also cannot be a current or, um, 
uh, tobacco or uh, cigarette uh, smoker in the last four years, um, no pregnancy or lactation. And if you're in another trial for either a study drug or device, or have been in one for the last eight weeks, that's also going to be an exclusion criteria. We'd have to wait for eight weeks to go from the, the last time you were using an investigational product. Again, major uh, other things, major surgery in the last two months, we'd have to wait beyond that um, time period. Um, severe other organ um, disease that will interfere with the trial, which um, we, we could discuss if that's something you're not sure about. Prior lung transplantation is also not going to be an exclusion criteria. And then cancer in the last two years. If you've had an acute exacerbation of IPF in the last 90 days, that's also going to be an issue. So we'd have to wait beyond that 90 day period. And if your liver function tests are very abnormal, that would also be something we'd have to wait for that to be normalized. Um, severe kidney disease is also an exclusion criteria. And if you're on pulmonary hypertension treatment, that would also be exclusionary. Um, most patients on, with IPF are not on steroids, but if you're on greater than 10 milligrams of prednisone a day, that would also be something that we'd have to, uh, that would exclude you from being a participant. So those are some of the basics of who the study participants were looking for are, but why would we want, why would you want to be in the study? Why did, why are we studying sarcatinib in this disease? So an important method of trying to Im increase the menu of options for IPF patients is to look at medications that we know are, are used and have a reasonable safety profile for other diseases. Um, and if there is rationale scientifically to, to, that they might help patients with IPF, um, that's one way that scientists and doctors look for new treatment um, options. <clears throat> so this is an example of what they, we call drug repurposing. So identifying new uses for approved um, drugs that are out there that we already know a lot about because they, they might have a greater safety profile than truly novel um, investigational drugs. And there's a lot of efficiency in terms of getting a drug to market for patients if it's already known what their safety profile is from other clinical trials. Sarcatinib was developed for the use of solid tumor treatments and is used by doctors treating cancers. Um, so uh, we kind of have some experience in the medical world about what using this drug is like sort of the molecular structure of sarcatinib. Um, but fundamentally, it inhibits something called a SARC, the SARC kinase pathway. And gene expression experiments that have been done in the labs that are studying IPF indicate that certain genes are higher expressed or lower expressed in IPF patients. We've known that for a long time. And sarcatinib has been shown to counteract these gene expression changes. So, the, so logically, people thought, well, maybe this could be something that um, ameliorates or slows down the fibrotic process. Um, these are some of the pathways scientifically. So Wnt signaling, extracellular matrix transition, cell cycle signaling, autophagy, and then TGF beta signaling. These are things that we know from the basic science of IPF uh, are involved in lung fibrosis. And so SARC kinase inhibition with drugs like sarcatinib might uh, affect these pathways in the right ways to help IPF patients. So then scientists took that knowledge and used what we call animal models of fibrosis. So in this case, the bleomycin model of lung fibrosis in mice. Um, so what they do is they take mice and give them bleomycin, um, which is known to trigger lung fibrosis, and look and see at whether um, sarcatinib helped reduce the fibrosis um, in those in those mice. And these are sort of technical slides from the basic science supporting, um, supporting this clinical trial. But what I'm trying to point out to you here is when you look at sarcatinib and compare it to nintetinib and profetinone in these same mice, in these clinical model, in these mouse models, we see a similar effect in terms of decreasing the fibrotic changes that the scientists were seeing. So that's what they're trying to show with this data here. Potential side effects are always important to think about when you're considering being in a clinical trial. So like a lot of the other medications that have been studied or are being studied in um, IPF, some of the potential side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, which is where you don't feel like eating um, because of the medication, flu-like symptoms, blood count, or liver function abnormalities. Rarely, there has been reported pneumonitis with sarcatinib, but that's a very rare um, side effect, rash, drug interactions. 
um, possible increased risk of infections, and then issues with pregnancies, which is why pregnancy um, during for clinical trial participants for this drug is not allowed. But the reason that the scientists that have proposed this clinical trial believe that sericatinib is still worth looking at despite the potential side effects is that the frequency of the side effects that usually limit our IPF patients in terms of their ability to stay on nintetinib or profenadone, namely the gastrointestinal side effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, those side effects have been shown in prior studies to be much lower in sericatinib. And for that reason, um, we wonder whether sarcatinib might be a good option. If it's both effective in the disease and better tolerated, then it might be a good option for a lot of our patients. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts and the rationale for about this study. So um, like I said, New York, New Haven, and Denver are already recruiting for this, this study. So if you live in those areas, um, uh, I'm happy to help direct you to the investigators and coordinators that are recruiting for those trials there. But if you're in the North Texas region and would be interested in coming to Baylor Dallas um, as part of this trial or want to see if you're a candidate, I'm always happy to discuss that. My office number is listed here, but here's my work email address as well. So I'm you know, more than happy to help talk with you and discuss whether this is an option that you want to consider. So I think that's all I had, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, um, Shelly, or if, if you guys have some right now, I should answer, but um, I'm also always available by email. I think you answered all the questions that I had as you were talking, so <clears throat> thank you so much for this information, and uh, you know where to find us. If you do have a question, Dr. Mathai will talk to you, and we'll get you in touch with her if you can't find her. So think about this very seriously. It sounds like uh, uh, it's um, mostly for the newly diagnosed, I would say. I think uh, that you're either newly diagnosed or people who've had IPF for a while, but don't haven't been able to tolerate okay. um, or get the medications that are already FDA approved. Okay. I think this could be a good option for you. Okay. Um, so those yeah. are the two groups. And, and one other question, I often heard that uh, people with familial PF, it's considered as IPF because you don't know why certain families get PF. <laughs> so with the people who think they have familial, would they be uh, a possibility as well? Yes, um, as long as they um, meet like the other inclusion and exclusion criteria, um, they would. Um, I think it's it, as long as it, if it's familial IPF, yes. There are people that have familial pulmonary fibrosis, but it's like a different, like a non-IPF kind. So there are mm -hmm. some families where like multiple people have pulmonary fibrosis from, but it's like in the context of rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Um, and so that's a little different, but if you have IPF, even mm -hmm. if it's familial or not familial, that, mm -hmm. that, um, that, that's fine for this trial. Okay. Good. Well, I think that you've answered all the questions and thank you so much for this very valuable information. And I hope that this clinical trial goes great and we have some new alternatives with medications. Yes, thank you so much. So. All right. Bye. Thank you guys so much Bye. for your time. Really appreciate you. We appreciate you too. <laughs>